am the Civil War Guru. Today I'm here in historic Bardstown, Kentucky at the Battles of the Western Theater Museum. And today our theme is Brown Water Navy. And a lot of uh, collectors know what the Brown Water Navy is, but the novices don't. The Brown Water was designated for the Navy that operated in the rivers, in the bays, in the channels, and they called them the Brown Water Navy. And today I have a wonderful grouping here to talk about. What we have is a grouping of Surgeon William R. Siemens of the USS Louisville, as in Louisville, Kentucky, which was an ironclad of the Mississippi Squadron. This ironclad cost $101,808 to be built back in 1861. It was 175 foot long, 51 foot across, and weighed 880 tons. Let's just talk a, a second about uh, some of the battle history of the ironclad USS Louisville. Fort Henry and Fort Donaldson on the Tennessee River, February 62. Siege of Island Number 10, Mississippi River, March of 62. Battle of Memphis, 62. Engagement with the CSS Arkansas, right above Vicksburg, 62. Bombardment of Drumgo's Bluff on the Yazoo River, December of 62. The capture of Fort Hinman, Arkansas, January 63. The expedition of Steele's Bayou, Mississippi, March of 63. They ran past the batteries at Vicksburg during the siege and survived April of 63. They were involved in a bombardment in the Grand Gulf of Mexico, April of 63. They were involved in the Red River Campaign, March through May of 64. Then they patrolled the Mississippi River the rest of the war after Vicksburg fell. And our gentleman surgeon, William R. Siemens, this is his grouping. He was a fabulous surgeon, and all the men loved him. And so we're going to take, uh, we're going to shoot this in two little segments. We're going to get his sword, his belt, his pipe there in this shot, and we'll get some of his artifacts, medical artifacts in the next shot. And I'll get Kenny, he's getting ready to move the camera up and get his name, which is etched on the blade of this Model 1852 Naval Officer's Sword. All right. Uh, I don't know if we're picking it up or not, uh, but there, that, in that panel is the name William R. Siemens. And it's, it's, you can see it with the naked eye, but with the, the lighting in this museum, it's a little tough. But anyway, that's where it's marked on the panel. And then I'm gonna move around and, and you, to show you the, the CSN and the guard, or the USN and the guard, and the two-piece belt plate. All right, there's a, a close-up for the for the layman that you know don't know what a, a naval sword is. This model 1852 naval sword has the USN and the guard, and also on his belt we have his original belt with it. And you notice it's a two-piece belt plate, and and uh, the Federal Eagle interlocks into the reef, and and that's uh, the the keeper system on on the naval belt. Now we're going to move to some of his uh, other artifacts and, and then we'll go to the next display. All right, there's this, uh, we did a little montage of uh, Surgeon Siemens artifacts. And on the left is a case fleeing with a, it's an automatic one that has a little spring lever in it. And that's for, you put on a vein and it bleed you. And uh, I'm going to get uh, Kenny to, uh, focus in on this little pipe. I love this guy's little pipe. It's a little uh, Looks like a little baby Commodore. That's a smoking pipe, and it's made of mere sound I'm gonna get uh, Kenny get a good picture of it before we leave and then of course there's a pocket flames and uh, Over to the right Of course, there's a syringer 
But there is a real cool microscope in the original box, and it's made by Craig, and it's got the patent date of 1862 on it. And those things, all, all those little paper car, uh, containers are just gone. But real cool. And, uh, but that's just some of his artifact. And there's a telescope in front. Uh, but I want to get Kenny to bring his little, little uh, Admiral smoking pipe up. I'm going to get over there and get around on the camera and let him pick it up. All right, there we got the little, little uh, naval uh, oriented uh, smoking pipe, which he smoked the heck out of it. There's a lot of residue on it, but it's really just cool. It's got that just chocolate patina. And I just wanted to get a shot of that because pipes were, were common in the Civil War. And uh, we have several in our collection at the museum. All right, Kenny Rogers, back your camera out. This model 1852 uh, naval officer sword, Mr. Sackford's, and uh, you know I want to while while we're doing the videos, I want to get a a shot of the blade where you can see the naval motifs on the blades. You know these were made uh, specifically for the uh, the navy, and and this is a wonderful sword. So Kenny's going to just kind of scan down there, and you see the wonderful Federal Eagle. And then you see the, hopefully you can see the anchor motif. Okay. It's perfect. All right, guys, we're going to go to some of Mr. Shackford's uh, other artifacts. All right, uh, we have a wonderful shot here of the uh, Lieutenant Shackford and in his uniform sitting down and this particular uniform is his midshipman uniform right before he was promoted to lieutenant and that's the uniform you look at in the, the case itself and uh, we also have his naval epaulets which are, are the gold units sitting in front for the layman's and a small compass and of course, uh, in Bardstown, you have to have a bourbon bottle. We've got a bourbon bottle in there and a spyglass or a telescope. So let Kenny kind of play around in there and see what he can pick up. And again, we, we have assisted lighting in here. So. Now to our new subject, 
And this gentleman here is Rear Admiral George W. Sumner. And he's from Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, he was appointed, or he got his appointment to, West, or to Annapolis via Mr. James M. Jewett of Louisville, who had a lot of political pull. So he went to, uh, he started at the, the academy in 58 and graduated in 62. His first duty was on the gunboat USS Colorado. And that was off the coast of Florida. And they were chasing blockade runners. Then he was assigned to the USS Massanoid in 1864. And he was on that until the end of the war. He continued his service and he, he had real good duty in Spanish American War in 1898. And he retired as a rear admiral in 1903. He had a great life, lived a long life. He died in 1924. Now this is a, this breathtaking uh, display. All the stuff comes from the family and it's all out of Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, we have his, uh, I believe, Lieutenant Commander's uniform. And uh, it has red piping on the sleeves, which denotes, uh, you know, uh, steam engineering. We have his sextant, which is at ID2, and, and some journals. And we have his uh, Spanish American War belt in the original box in there. And we have one of his uh, Admiral Chevrons in, uh, in his wallet and a couple other personal items in there. But what's neat in, in there is the officer's naval cutlass with the USN cut out of the guard. Spectacular condition. And we have, his, uh, of course, his standard swords uh, leaning in the corner. All right, Kenny, so let's get up there and, and uh, get up on the sword first, the naval cutlass, and then we'll move around, get you some great shots here. All right, there's the officer's cutlass, and we have a couple different versions of this. Um, we have one in a, a display adjacent to this. But that's just a standard uh, naval cutlass. And then, uh, of course, it was embellished with this, uh, you know, relief stamped guard, which is, uh, I think, just spectacular. And then, of course, the pommel cap has had some extra engraving on it. But it's a real wonderful sword. All right, Kenny, let's move to the sextant next. All right, okay, Kenny's got a good, real good shot of the the sexton and and these sections they're always missing the original box it was in this has the original box its labels and it is american made and it's i think it's e g w blunt and blunt made a lot of nautical uh, instruments and they were up on front street in new york city and that's made of ebony and it's almost like the song of the 60s ebony and ivory this is an outstanding piece of naval history there in front of you. And all the officers know, had to know how to read them. And uh, of course, this, this gentleman kept that one all through till he retired. And uh, this is fantastic condition. I'm thrilled to death to look at it. All right, we're gonna move to the next item. All right, what you have in front of you is the original box label. Of course, with Mr. Uh, Sumner's uh, name on it. This is made by Horseman V. Alien. And uh, th this is this fantastic condition. And this was his uh, Spanish American War belt. And uh, the difference between uh, the belts of the Civil War and the belts of the Spanish American War is the belts of the Civil War were the tongue and reef style. And the belts of the Spanish American War were one plate and then underneath the plate which had your naval uh, and motif on it, just had a hook where it hooked into the other side. So this was, uh, 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 I guess, acquired during right before the, the Span Am War. Fantastic condition. And evidently it didn't wear much because the other one's got all the wear on it. And then I'll have Kenny move over here just so you know what a Rear Admiral uh, shoulder board looks like. And get that, then we'll back off and get an overall picture of the uniform.
All right, there's this uh, Rear Admiral uh, shoulder board, and, uh, and, and that's uh, Span Am War, Spanish American War, 1898 vintage. And then Kenny's going to back out a little bit, and you'll see the little two gold bullions on each side of that. Uh, those are the, the bullion that belongs on a, a naval chapeau, and those were from his Civil War chapeau. All right, we're going to get a shot of the the uh, lieutenant commander's uniform that belonged to him, and he's also wearing a, a chapeau. So Kenny's going to get you a good shot of that, then we'll move to the next display. All right, Kenny's got you a good shot of that. And again, that's his uh, lieutenant commander uniform, and that's, I think, right at the end of the Civil War and on into the, to the 1870s. It's wonderful, outstanding condition. And he has his lieutenant commander shoulder board on, I believe. And, and again, the two-piece belt and uh, for Kenny uh, shuts down. I'm going to just zoom in on that belt plate because uh, that is the is Civil War belt plate. And then we'll go to the next display.